friend recently asked me, Crumpton, what's the difference between you and a stripper? The difference is a stripper gets paid to show off her nipples to other people. Now, joking aside, there is an undercurrent of truth to that statement. And that's the fact that as an Olympian, I wasn't paid to be there. I wasn't paid to compete in the Olympics. Now, from the IOC's perspective, it's supposed to be a break-even affair, where once you're qualified, all expenses for every athlete are taken care of. Actually, strictly speaking, I ended up losing money at the Olympics. I couldn't get a receipt for a photo booth for my passport photos and a parking garage in Zurich. So I was actually out about 25 Swiss francs all in all. And if you're lucky enough to live in a country with government support, you might get paid to compete in the games and you might get paid to win a medal, but that's far from a universal outcome. Now, it should be said that I am paid to be an athlete. I am on the IOC's payroll as a Solidarity Scholarship recipient. But that's to participate in sports and live up to the ethos of solidarity, as the name implies. It's not to compete at the Olympic Games. So this begs a rather important question. Should Olympians be paid by the IOC to compete at the Olympic Games? Now, as some of you may recall on this channel, this was a question that I wanted to ask to other Olympians at the Winter Olympics. It was actually a part of my platform where I was running for the IOC's Athlete Commission. And well, I didn't win a spot, it went to two very deserving athletes, Frida and Martin, and I'm sure they'll do a fantastic job. But the question still goes unanswered. And so that question that I asked my fellow Olympians was, do you think the IOC should share its revenue directly with the Olympic athletes? However, once I realized that I was dealing with second languages and not everyone knew what the word revenue meant, I also phrased the question as, do you think we Olympic athletes should be paid directly by the IOC? And as you can see, an overwhelming majority of the Olympians thought that yes, they think that we Olympic athletes should be paid directly by the IOC. Of the 68 respondents, 48 of them said yes, which works out to 71%. 16% or 11 of the respondents ended up saying no, and nine athletes or 13% said that they don't know or that they didn't have an opinion. In addition to getting the quantitative data, I also wanted to get qualitative data. So I asked the Olympians for their opinions if they wanted to lend an anonymous quote for this survey. And this ranged from first time Olympians to multiple medal winners and some of the most famous athletes in their sports. And this is the collection that I got in the order that I received them. One said, I had never even thought of that being a possibility before. I think they should, but I don't think they will from a Great Britain athlete. A Canadian athlete said, F yeah, followed by another Canadian athlete who also said, yes, F yes. Uh, if anyone's been following the Canadians, they've been having some issues in their federations. An Italian Olympian said, reinvest the money directly to the athletes instead of giving it to the NOCs. A Dutch Olympian said, I've never thought about that. And that seems to be a theme too, is that many athletes didn't even know that this could even be possible, that they could be paid. An Australian Olympian said, yeah, definitely. And said that very emphatically, I should add. No, I think the money should be given to the host nation for more sporting infrastructure. That was said by a Dutch Olympian. Yes, I'm completely self-funded and I get nothing. That's from a Belgian Olympian. A German Olympian also said, I never thought about this before. A Swiss Olympian said, no, because we can make a good living with our sport. A USA Olympian said, no, I think our sporting federation should pay us. A Romanian Olympian said, no, we do it for the experience, not the money. An Italian Olympian also said no, said no, it takes away from the value of the Olympics. Then there was another athlete who said, yes, Olympic sport has become too professional and you're asking athletes to sacrifice their lives for nothing. Not all nations get their funding from the government. That was said by a US Olympian. And yes, the USA is one of those countries that does not get any government support. It's all privately funded. A Dutch Olympian said, yes, I was working four jobs while training. We should be paid. That was an amazing story, working the four jobs and qualifying for the Olympics. A Jamaican Olympian said, yes, 100%. And another Jamaican Olympian said, yes, definitely, bro. And finally, yes, it could be a drop in the bucket for the IOC and it would be life changing to the athlete. And that was said by a USA Olympian. As you can see, Olympic athletes have reasons both for and against receiving payment from the IOC. 
Given that diversity in reasoning, I'd like to explore both sides of the equation in more depth, which in turn will also reveal my opinion on the matter. First is the notion that the Olympics are for amateur athletes. This is a terrible reason not to pay Olympians, because it's almost entirely false. Although the Olympics started as an amateur athletic endeavor, the rules of amateurism started to fade in the 1970s and 1980s when people realized maybe it's a good idea if these athletes can buy groceries and feed themselves. But the real death of amateurism came in 1992 at the Barcelona Olympics when NBA players were allowed to compete for the first time. That was the equivalent of the Berlin Wall falling down for amateurism in the Olympics. As a result, Olympic popularity and revenue skyrocketed. And so using the amateurism excuse not to pay athletes is as outdated as flat top haircuts and whatever this is. Second reason is the ancient Olympians in Greece weren't paid, therefore modern Olympians shouldn't be paid either. This is the reason given by the IOC if one visits the IOC museum in Lausanne, Switzerland. However, I would opine that following the traditions of people who lived thousands of years ago is a hazardous affair. And while it's undeniably true that the ancient Greeks left a legacy worthy of study and set the foundation for much of modernity, I'd think twice about keeping too many traditions from the ancient world. Pedophilia and bestiality, to take just two examples, are common acts of the ancient world that I think should remain there. All of this is to say that just because something is a tradition doesn't mean it deserves to continue being practiced. The third reason is because paying athletes would go against the spirit of the sport and it would somehow devalue the achievement. This argument rests on thin ice. Are the NBA games or Premier League football matches any less exciting because the athletes are being paid millions of dollars? I don't think so. Clearly the essential nature of sport competition can coexist with athlete compensation, so I don't buy this argument at all. The fourth reason is 80% of the IOC's revenue already goes back into sports. Actually, the IOC boasts that 90% of its revenue goes into, quote, Olympic Games and athlete development. However, the vast majority of that money goes into non-corporeal corporate entities that are trapped inside this giant web of IOC bureaucracy instead of supporting athletes directly. That's a classic way for inefficiencies, if not outright grift, to occur. The Wikipedia page on Olympic Games scandals and controversies certainly isn't a short one. And while there are merits to this decentralized model, it's a hard argument to make when so many Olympians, real physical living human beings, are struggling to make ends meet while the metaphysical organizations that rule over the athletes are rolling in the money hand over fist. At the end of the day, when scrutinized closely, this is not a strong argument to make when denying Olympic athletes a share of the revenue. And the fifth reason is because economic market forces still support not paying Olympians. This is probably the most powerful and most valid reason. At the end of the day, the IOC is a self-interested private organization that is operating in the modern global economy, and it is attempting to maximize its revenue while minimizing its costs. And so, if an organization can maximize its revenue without having to pay the principal laborers who make the revenue generation possible, then why wouldn't it? Isn't that the holy grail of self-interested utility maximizing organizations? Now, in the case of the IOC not paying the athletes, it may be a valid reason, but is it a good reason? I suppose that depends on which way the moral needle of your economic compass points. I would argue, no, it's not a good reason at all. In fact, it's actually an awful reason. And this is a critical point. Just because an economic market finds equilibrium between the supply and demand of labor does not mean the equilibrium is of a moral or ethical nature. Just look at serfdom or slavery. Both of those were economic systems which found equilibrium by using unpaid labor to extract revenue. But I don't think any sane person in the 21st century would try to argue that serfdom or slavery are moral or ethical labor markets. Now, to be clear, I'm not saying that being an Olympian is like being a slave, even though some Olympians I talked to in Beijing intimated as such. They said, we're here, we get fed, we get housed, and we get some cool toys, but we're not paid anything. It's like we're slaves working for free. Now, I see the similarity, but I don't buy the whole comparison. In fact, I outright reject it. It grossly minimizes the dehumanizing effects of slavery and ignores the point that Olympians can walk away at any point or refuse to compete. But my underlying point about labor economics still stands. Market equilibrium does not equal moral equilibrium. Now, all this talk about money, capitalism, non-market intervening forces, philosophy can get a little bit heavy. 
and probably too much for a little YouTube video. It's the kind of thing that I could write a 550 page book about. Oh wait, I did write a 550 page book about it. So if you'd like to read more about this type of thing, you're welcome to pick up my book. I'll leave a link in the description. Fair warning, there's also a liberal use of some highly graphic Fifty Shades of Grey type stuff too. Anyway, back to the Olympic stuff. Now for some of the reasons why the IOC should pay its athletes to compete in the Olympics. The first reason is, society's momentum is already moving towards the model where you should pay your athletes. Case in point number one, the Supreme Court of the United States ruled that the athletes of the NCAA are allowed to share in the revenue that they generate. And NCAA athletes are amateur athletes, not professionals. Even Justice Brett Kavanaugh, a conservative member of the court, wrote in his concurring opinion, quote, NCAA and its member colleges are suppressing the pay of student athletes who collectively generate billions of dollars in revenue for colleges every year. Those enormous sums of money flow into seemingly everyone except for student athletes, end quote. And Justice Kavanaugh later writes, quote, the NCAA's business model would be flatly illegal in almost any other industry in America, end quote. Case in point number two, in 2019, a German court ruled that the IOC overstepped its bounds by unnecessarily and illegally restricting athletes' right to promote themselves, specifically as it relates to Rule 40.3 of the IOC Charter. For most athletes, the Olympic Games are the biggest opportunity to promote oneself, and the shackles placed on we athletes by the IOC were not just excessive, but they contributed to material harm against our ability to earn money and sustain our livelihoods. Second reason is... The IOC already says it wants to better support its athletes and keep athletes at the center of the Olympic movement. This phrase, the athletes are at the heart of the Olympic movement, has been repeated ad nauseum in public addresses on the IOC website and in press releases as one of the central messages of the IOC. Even President Bach, in a letter to Olympians, wrote, quote, Athletes deserve our utmost support to ensure that they can prepare in full concentration on their sport and compete in the best possible conditions in every respect, end quote. Well, if that's true, then wouldn't part of the utmost support include paying the athletes? Bottom line here, the best way to support athletes is to pay them, period. There's no need to go through a dozen corporate NPO entities to support athletes. It's operationally inefficient and it perpetuates the chronic disenfranchisement of athletes. And the third reason why the IOC should pay its athletes is because it's simply the morally right thing to do. There's a reason why in the 21st century, the moral arc of humanity condemns slavery and serfdom. There's a very good reason why 88% of countries and self-governing territories have minimum wage laws. Even Switzerland, where the IOC is based, despite not having a national minimum wage, does have some of the highest regional and city minimum wages in the entire world. In the 21st century, the overwhelming consensus among morally upstanding people is to pay the individuals who help earn the revenue, and not to shamelessly exploit them for their free labor. The natural call to action here to fix this unjust and morally hazardous business model is for the IOC to compensate its athletes. Revenue sharing models can be taken from any of the various professional sporting leagues, like the NFL or the NBA, for example. Both of those organizations use a fixed percentage of revenue, about 50%, that goes directly towards athlete paychecks. So some back of the envelope math here. 50% of the IOC's recent $7.6 billion revenue in a recent quadrennial cycle amounts to $3.8 billion, which when divided by the approximately 14,000 athletes who competed in the Tokyo and Beijing Olympic Games, equates to over $270,000 per athlete. Or even half that sum, which would be 25% revenue sharing, would still yield a paycheck of over $135,000 per athlete. As that one American Olympian that I surveyed correctly stated, that's life-changing money. So above and beyond anything else in this video, my overriding point is this. If the IOC truly values its athletes and wants to do what's best for us, then they should pay us. It's long overdue to enter the modern age and do the ethical thing. And with the help of the IOC athletes' commissions, other Olympians, and like-minded people around the world who are willing to share this message, we can make Paris 2024 and Milan Cortina 2026 the first Olympic Games where athletes share in the revenue that they generate.